When I interned at an independent pharmacy many years ago, the owner pharmacist told me that one of his friend, who is also a pharmacist, took metformin every day, even though he did not have diabetes. I was skeptical. Like why? He just told me that his friend believed metformin is a maintenance drug that everybody should take. Hmm. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back this week. Now this week I want to share the science behind why metformin, the number one prescribed drug for type two diabetes, is being termed as a wonder drug. And new data is showing metformin can even lower the incidence of long COVID and viral load. So let's find out. So what is metformin? Let's have a quick review of the drug. Metformin has an herbal lineage that can be traced from the use of goat's root or French lilac. As a traditional medicine in medieval Europe, in 1772, Sir John Hill recommended using goat's root to treat thirst and frequent urination, which are the hallmark symptoms of untreated diabetes. The active ingredient in the plant was identified hundreds of years later as galgene. Which trigger a striking reduction in blood glucose. Notice the chemical structure of galgene is quite similar to metformin. The rediscovery of using metformin in diabetes was pursued by the French physician Jean Stern in 1957. By the 1960s, metformin was approved for treating diabetes in many European countries, but it wasn't until 1995 that the US FDA approved it for use in the US. It has since become the most commonly prescribed oral medication for people with type 2 diabetes who cannot control their blood sugar with diet and exercise alone. Metformin worked to treat diabetes by making the body more sensitive to insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by the pancreas to allow sugar to move from your blood into your cells so your cells can function properly. But insulin doesn't work well when the blood sugar is too high. Metformin makes insulin work better and cells can absorb sugar more efficiently. Second, metformin helps lower the amount of sugar absorbed from the intestine after a meal into the blood. And lastly, metformin also lowers the sugar that is produced by the liver. The drug is currently approved for treating type 2 diabetes, but it is also being used off-label for prediabetes and gestational diabetes that happens during pregnancy. Common side effects of metformin are relatively mild, but usually involve stomach discomforts such as gas, upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, cramping, and diarrhea. Some patients may also have vitamin B12 deficiency that may be corrected with proper supplementation. So why is metformin a wonder drug? It is the first oral drug of choice for diabetes because it doesn't increase insulin production in the body, so it has a lesser risk of causing low blood sugar like some other diabetes medications. Metformin may also help some people to lose weight, which is often recommended for diabetes patients to keep blood sugar under control. Scientists have shown that metformin lowers weight by increasing a protein called GDF15 in the body, which helps to lower appetite and caloric intake. This effect is independent of its effect of lowering blood sugar levels. But in addition to metformin's unique therapeutic action against diabetes, scientists are also finding new evidence of how metformin lowering the risk of cancer, dementia, stroke, aging, and even age-related diseases. A meta-analysis published in 2020 analyzed 67 studies with more than 10 million type 2 diabetes patients and about 145,000 cancer cases. Overall, diabetes patients who used metformin had a 30% lower cancer risk than those who did not. These include breast, colon, and prostate cancers. Furthermore, compared to other commonly used diabetes drugs, Metformin use is also associated with decreasing cancer risk by 20%. So this suggests 
performance may lower cancer risk by a different mechanism than just lowering blood sugar levels. Basic science research has shown that metformin inhibits a cellular pathway called mTOR, which regulates cell cycles and is overactivated in many cancer cells. So metformin may lower the risk of cancer by stopping mTOR action. A different meta-analysis showed cognitive impairment was significantly less prevalent in diabetes patients on metformin, and the drug also reduces. Dementia incident. However, the study found no evidence to support using metformin to prevent dementia in people without diabetes. A four-year follow-up study showed that metformin use also lowered the risk of stroke. In addition, a review article published in 2021 summarized metformin's potential effect in slowing aging and increasing life expectancy by improving the body's responsiveness to insulin. Antioxidant effects and improving blood vessel health. So there appear to be many wonders in metformin. What's new? Now let's look at metformin and COVID. Metformin was involved in a phase three randomized placebo-controlled trial called COVID Out, but it failed to show a reduction in disease severity, hospitalization, or death from COVID in more than 1,000 non-hospitalized. Overweight or obese adult patient at day 14, or the primary outcome endpoint. This study was published in August 2022 in the New England Journal of Medicine. But a newer sub-analysis of the same clinical trial that is still in preprint showed that patients who took immediate release metformin with an increasing dose of up to 1,500 milligram per day. For 14 days, had a 42% relative decrease in the incidence of long COVID compared to its blind control group. It is important to note that only 2% of the roughly 1,000 patients had diabetes. Half received the primary series of the COVID vaccine, and about 5% received a booster dose. More recently, a conference paper was presented at Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections that took place in Seattle, Washington, from February 19 to 22. The abstract 170, titled "Metformin Reduced SARS-CoV-2 Viral Load in Phase Three Randomized Clinical Trial," presented new data from the COVID out Phase Three trial. According to a report published on Medscape, the research team showed that metformin reduced the viral load by 4.4 fold compared to the placebo. Furthermore, when doses of metformin increased, the antiviral effect also became more robust, and the effect was more pronounced in patients who were not vaccinated. The antiviral effect with metformin was also similar to that seen with Paxlovid. At day five, and was greater than Paxlovid at day ten. The new finding presented in the conference is consistent with a previous study showed that metformin reduced SARS-CoV-2 viral load. The bottom line is that metformin is a very inexpensive drug that has been widely used for decades. It is safe for treating diabetes. And the side effects are relatively mild. Although it is not currently recommended or authorized in treating COVID, if research is showing metformin's ability to benefit COVID outcomes, even in a subset of population, that is something we all need to pay attention to. I think by this time, most of us agree that COVID is here to stay, and the more inexpensive. And safe drug that is available for treating COVID, the better. Let's hope metformin does not get suppressed by the big pharma this time. That is all for this week. And if you like this video or this channel, I hope you will come back next week for more similar health content. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. Bye.